Hello everybody, what's going on? Welcome to another Python tutorial video. In this video, we're going to be talking about how to do real-time analysis. In this video, we're going to be doing this with sentiment analysis as an example, and we'll be using the Centex API on tweets for this. And while I use the uh, Centex API as an example, you can do this with any API, or you can even do it with your own custom functions. So even though I'm using our API, you can do it with whatever you want using an identical structure. Because, uh, yeah, I've had a lot of people ask me about, you know, doing Twitter analysis, and they're almost always wanting to, they're coming from my, you know, Twitter streaming tutorial, they're saving it to a CSV like I showed you guys how to do, and then they're wanting to do analysis on that CSV. <laughs> and, um, and this is kind of problematic for a few reasons. One is you might as well streamline it with with the actual stream and just do the analysis as it comes in because either way you're going to be using computing time and uh, either you're pausing the, the Twitter stream and then doing the analysis because it's going to be really hard to catch up anyways if you're constantly streaming and then constantly trying to do analysis on the stream because the stream is actually pretty quick if you have a decent internet connection. So it, it's kind of problematic for that reason. You might as well stay as efficient as possible. But also number two, uh, you're not allowed to store tweets uh, for more than 24 hours. If you do, you're violating the terms of service that you accepted. So you can't do that anyways, right? Uh, so with those two things in mind, let's go ahead and get started. So first what we want to do is we want to grab the starting code from the previous Twitter API tutorial video. If you've not done those tutorial videos, especially the first one, uh, then you can learn about it by watching uh, the video. I'm going to link you guys to the sample code from those videos. If you want to learn about it, there's a video right above the sample code. You can watch that video if you want to learn more about the API. Um, so anyway, go to that link, and whenever you do, oops, I'll try to drag it over, you should land yourself on a page uh, like this one. So this is the video. You could watch that uh, for the uh, Twitter API. And then here is the sample code in case you lost yours. Real condensed version. Uh, you'll obviously, if you are still planning on uh, not watching the beginning video, <laughs> and uh, you've not done anything like this before, you'll obviously need your own consumer key, secret, access token, and access secret, or authentication token, and authentic... I forget what, which one, what they call it, but a token and a secret, you're going to need your own. Uh, and then again, if you want to figure out how to get them, and you don't know how, watch the video, or go to dev.twitter.com and, and figure it out. So anyways, uh, otherwise, for everyone that's followed along, just go ahead and copy this code, and paste it into an empty you know script. Uh, so the next thing that we want to do now is we need to make a few changes uh, to incorporate what we're going to do next. So again, with, with what we're doing here, I'm going to use the Centex API. You can use anyone's API or a custom function. If you're going to use a custom function, then you're not going to need to import URL lib or URL lib2. Since I'm using an API, I'm going to import URL lib. So I'm going to do that, URL lib. Um, and then the, in the Centex API, for anyone who is interested, it's not a free API, it is a paid API. And if you want to know more about it, just go to Centex.com and there's a link in the nav bar for the API. Um, so anyway, that's that. So then, um, the other thing we're going to need, at least if you're going to use someone's API uh, or our API, you're going to need the auth. Uh, so for me, I'm going to call it Centex auth. And just as a quick aside, uh, for anybody who is using an API and they have an auth, don't make your variable auth because auth is used in Tweepy. Uh, even though you haven't defined anything as well, you define auth down here, so it's going to um, it's going to conflict. So so you can't do that, right? So just make sure you're you're, you're not conflicting anything. So for me, I'm going to call it centex auth because I have a centex uh, auth token here. And um, I'm going to leave that blank for now. And these, um, you can try them if you want, but they don't work. So that's that. So anyway, and I'll, I'll fill those in before we actually run it at the end. And in fact, let me go ahead and just make the space here. So um, just make sure you import URL lib if you're using someone's auth that requires um, URL encoding. And then make sure you add in whatever your auth is for that API, or if it's our API, add in that auth there. So now... Like I said, you won't have to use our API. You can use anyone's API or your own function. So in that case, let's make a function. So what function do we want to pass the tweets through? Because we're down here, 
uh, this is where the tweet comes out in data. It's not the tweet. It actually, it comes out as a uh, the entire JSON output. We'll deal with that in a second. But what do we want to pass the tweet through? Well, we want to pass that through a function. So we're going to say define. Maybe make sure I didn't type define already. Okay, define. And for me, I'm just going to call it sentiment analysis. And this function is going to take one parameter, and that's going to be text. So this function is going to do something to the text that we pass through. So in this case, um, we have to do URL encoding with the Syntax API, and with most APIs, you're going to need to use encoding uh, if you're sending through a text, mostly for the spaces, right? So you can't normally you can't send in a string of text with spaces. It needs to be encoded, and like for example, a space in, with URL encoding is a percent twenty, right? So anyway, uh, I'm going to say encoded text uh, equals URL lib dot quote text. And then I'm going to do the API underscore call equals, and that's going to be HTTP colon slash slash syntax dot com slash API slash API dot PHP question mark for variable text equals what? Then we append here uh, encoded text plus uh, what was the auth? So an auth. Uh, equals and then plus for me it's syntax auth but for you would be you know whatever if you're using an API and obviously if you're not using an API and you've written your own custom function uh, these two lines would be you know you wouldn't even have those but then you know but it, let, let's say you were writing your own custom function and let's say your function is very basic and it returns analysis of how long is the tweet so you would just say you know x equals len text right that would be your function and then what you're going to end up doing is I'm going to delete this now. And the output from uh, this API call is going to be URL, li URL lib dot URL open. And it's going to open this API call. And then it's going to read the result, which is just a numerical result. But basically, after you've written your whole function, like this is my function, right? This is what's going to take the text and convert it to a sentiment analysis numerical value. Right, so whatever your function is, like maybe you're counting the length, maybe you're just counting the number of times they mention something, that's what you'd do so far. And then at the end of the function, just have it return output. Whatever, whatever you want it, that function to return, uh, you just say that down here. Now, we'll come down to our listener, and since I made a bunch of space, let me get rid of this space. I just want to have a bunch of space from uh, up there. Now, um, and obviously you don't have to do that, the only reason I'm doing that is so I can edit in my, uh, you know, all my little secret codes here and run it uh, in real time with you guys. So anyway, um, next what we want to do, oops, too many spaces. I'm just trying to center this a little bit. So next what we want to do is once we've, once we've, you know, put in our function, right, our function that does whatever we want, you know, um, Twitter analysis for, now we come down to the listener and here at least for us, you can use the JSON module. I always just kind of split it up. I'm just silly like that. So I'm going to say the tweet equals data dot split. And it's a split function here. And what we split it by is it comes out text, uh, colon, double quotes, and then close, um, close a single quotation. And then we want the second part of that or the first if element there. And then again, we want to split again. This time we're splitting by double quote, comma, double quote, source, and then the zeroth element. So it's, oops, the zeroth element. So, so basically this splits everything and this goes to the left and then this splits and goes to the right. If, if, in case that's confusing, you can also use the JSON uh, module if, you, if you're comfortable with that. Otherwise, just copy exactly what I did and this will return the tweet to you. Um, so once we've done that, we don't need to print data anymore. And so we've got the tweet. Now, what do we want to do? Well, we, we wanted to do uh, some sort of analysis on that tweet, right? And we made this function that performs analysis on the text that's passed through. So we would want to pass what? The tweet, right? Through that function. So the next thing that we would do is we would say, at least for us, we're doing sentiment analysis. So I'm going to say sentiment rating equals sentiment analysis. So it's calling this function. And then what, what uh, you know, text do I want to pass through it? Well, I want to pass through tweet, right? So I want to perform this function on tweet. 
So what it's going to do is every tweet I pass through here is going to do the API. It's going to call the API. It's going to output whatever the sentiment reading is from our API, return that output, and assign it to this variable right here. So we've done that. Now, um, that's really all we would all we need to do. The rest, the rest is, you know, you save it to a file or something like that or, or a database. So since the database is a little more confusing, I'm just going to save it to a file since there's less steps involved. So I'm going to say now, save me, and this is going to be the line that we save, uh, is going to equal tweet, since we want to have the tweet. Then we're going to do a pl uh, plus, uh, and we're going to use a double colon as a delimiter. And the reason we want to use a double colon instead of something like a, like a comma <laughs> is because people oftentimes are going to have a comma in their actual tweet. So you wouldn't want to use a delimiter as a comma um, for that reason. <laughs> anyway, so then plus, uh, then we want to have our sentiment rating. So it'll be the tweet, uh, colon, colon, and even colons, right? The reason why we're using a double colon is people use colons in their tweets too, right? Uh, so anyways, plus sentiment rating, and then plus, since we're saving it to a file, we're just going to have a new line at the end of everything. So then we actually want to save it to a file. So we're just going to say output equals open, and I'm just going to save this to out, oops, uh, output.csv uh, with the intention to append, and then output.write uh, save me, and output.close. You obviously don't need to close there if you don't want to. Sometimes when the operations are fast enough, I've had Python trip over itself. Um, in theory, it shouldn't with append, but you still can't be doing multiple writes. So sometimes it goes so quick. Um, it probably won't with the Twitter stream, but I always just add that there just for safety, especially since we're opening it every time anyways. You might as well just close it every time. So anyway, we need to append or add that. And after that, once you've done all of that, you should have, um, it should be complete, right? So what I'm going to go ahead and do now is come back up here. I'm going to add you know, put my consumer key in, my syntax authorization, and we'll actually run this. We can see the output, and then we can also open up this uh, output.csv file. So let me go ahead and append or um, edit in all my stuff real quick. All right, so I've edited all my stuff. Uh, you should too, <laughs> if you haven't already. And now let's go ahead and run it. So we'll run it. And for whatever reason, it's taking a while to connect. Uh, I have like, you know, a bunch of streams, so maybe that's the issue. Or are we not, oh, we're not actually printing out the tweet. <laughs> that's why. So let me just run it for a few minutes here. Uh, sorry, I thought I was printing out the tweet, but I guess we left that out because we were printing data and then I deleted it and I should have just changed it to tweet. But um, it is saving to our output file. We really only need to do it for a little bit. So I'm going to go ahead and actually uh, break this. Uh, for anyone that doesn't know, to keyboard interrupt, uh, just hit control C and that will break the script. So now, uh, now that we've done that, let's check out the output file. So the output file should just be in the same directory as your script. So here's my script here. And so we can uh, open up the output. So just edit with notepad or whatever you've got. And so here is our output here. Let me condense it so everything um, fits. Uh, so, um, so as you can see here, we've got the lines here. Um, you know, we've opened up space for children, 18K displays have gathered, I don't know, car crisis, I'm not sure what the car crisis is, but negative two sentiment, let's find one that's bad. Um, collision involving one car, one casualty, negative four, obviously we did, like the search term was car, so, so obviously a lot of car crashes, this guy misses his car, um, <laughs> here's a negative one. Fucking up my car screwed everything, or fucking up my car screwed everything up for me. Damn. Negative six. Um, yeah, you know, messing up your car is not a good idea, buddy. Um, see, if, is anybody actually positive uh, about their car? Couldn't get his car started. No, 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 no. Ah, I just don't really see anybody's happy about their car. It's very sad, guys. <laughs> A few zeros. Let's see. Is there? Okay, we got a positive two. About this eleven-year-old boy who stopped traffic to rescue a dog hit by a car. So that was positive. <laughs> anyway, um, that pretty much covers it. Uh, hopefully, uh, that helps some of you guys out. Even like I said, even if you're not using the Syntax API uh, or even an API at all, uh, you can just you can pass it through any function here. You know, you don't have to. Um, 
even using API, you could have the function doing all of the sentiment analysis within this function and just return whatever output you're looking for and save it. Now, naturally, like I said, you you probably shouldn't be saving the tweet uh, to your phone, because again, you're not allowed to store tweets for more than 24 hours. So just keep that in mind. If you did follow uh, follow along, you wouldn't, uh, you still, you can't be saving the tweet for more than 24 hours. So just keep that in mind. So, you know, like for like some of the stuff that we do, um, you know, sometimes we use like named entity recognition. And so if we find the named entity, we'll save the named entity and the sentiment with that named entity. And, you know, that's totally allowed. And so you can do stuff like that. But obviously, again, you just can't save the full tweet. But anyway, so hopefully you guys enjoyed. Hopefully uh, that helps some of you guys out that are trying to figure out how you can perform analysis in real time. Uh, you just pass it through a function. So... Um, hopefully that was helpful for you guys. As always, thanks for watching. Thanks for all the support and the subscriptions. And until next time.